Sean with Green Irish Cheap. This box has been at my house unopened for an embarrassingly long amount of time. The Jeep JL Wrangler is a great vehicle and I love mine. Lots of people start accessorizing after they get their Jeep. This is kind of a Tinker Toy car, right? You can put all kinds of cool stuff on it. Um, and one of the primary things that people like to stick on their Jeep is a compressor because if you take your Jeep off-road, you want to take the air out for traction in the snow or off-road or maybe for comfort whatever reason and once you've taken air out of tires inevitably you finish your trip and you want to put air back in that's where the compressor comes in handy and unfortunately while on older jeep models there were various places you could put the compressor even in the engine bay the jeep jl especially with the various engine configurations and myself i have the hybrid turbo there is really not room in the engine compartment to put it there are a couple other places. I've seen one where you stick it in the wheel well. I've seen one where you stick it in the side inside the cabin of the Jeep. Neither one of those appealed to me for various reasons. And then American Adventure Labs came out with a solution. Their solution hides the compressor in this little storage area right here. This is a useless area. Once you go somewhere with your Jeep, you probably have stuff in the back of your Jeep sitting right on top of this. And there's no way that you can access anything that you put into that little storage cubby. So to Turn that cubby into a useful space where you can store the compressor and an auxiliary battery, thank you American Adventure Labs, it was incredibly appealing to me. Back in 2020, Sean Holman with Motor Trend posted a little how-to to install the American Adventure Labs kit there. It looked great, but then two years later, I was looking on JL Wrangler forums just, I think, last January, February, and Jack Brewski posted an amazing description of how to install this thing and a lot of the wrinkles and problems that you have to make it look OEM when you're done that maybe weren't exactly covered in the other ones. What I could not find was a video where somebody did this. So here I am and that's what we're gonna do today. I just have been waiting for, the, for enough time and the right weather to get out here and open this. I bought everything they offer, the bracket, the wiring, the battery, the compressor, the, the controller, everything. So we're gonna open up this box. We're gonna see what's inside. I have no illusions this is gonna be a quick build. Based on uh, what Jack posted on Jail Wrangler forums, it, it looks like this is a lot of work. So it's probably going to be multiple days of me doing bit by bit. But let's start by unboxing the American Adventure Labs uh, ARB Compressor Auxiliary Battery Kit. This is a heavy box, probably because, you know, it's got a battery in it. I don't want to cut into this in case it's got some wiring and I cut the wrong thing. That would be bad. And, okay. So this looks like the wiring and bits and pieces for the ARB compressor. And the installation guide. Oh, look at this. Chachki! Next up, we got something long. Yep, sure enough. There we go. This goes into the sidewall. It's got the box on top, the access point, that, and the new 12 volt point. Cool. All right, this is our Red Arc controller. This is gonna keep our battery charged. This next piece is large. Oh, wow. I did not expect that to come pre-mounted. That is, that's great. Um, it's crazy looking at that and thinking that that is gonna fit into the tub of the back of the TR. So this thing is about 51 pounds. Just the bracket, the compressor, and the battery. First, we're gonna have to remove the trim from the inside, starting with these. So you can use a screwdriver or I've got a little trim remover tool here. You just pop this up and using a 40 torque you can just remove this like that and it comes right off once you've taken all six of those off i found you can just lift this whole thing and it all just comes off for you and there you go you've got access to the box so the next step are the two 10 mil bolts on the side of the tub just get your 10 mil on there and get it up out Yeah, okay, that's gonna fit. To remove the side panel of the Jeep, you have to take off a couple of things. This one with the uh, seatbelt, just kinda get your tool in there. You can use a screwdriver and it 
kind of pops up out of the way. You see it's secured with two things there. And then there's this access panel, which is the access panel for getting to the tail light. So if you wanted to remove the tail light, this is what you would remove. There's a little bolt in there that allows you to free that up. Um, I did that in a previous one, so that'll get that open. This is the thing we're gonna cut for the wiring. Next, we gotta kind of get this paneling open. You can kind of just pull it, it'll pop open. You remove this panel here where your jack is, and that will give you better access to getting in here and pop some of these up here. Down here, we've got some things behind the trim. So as you're pulling off this panel, uh, you just kind of loosen from the bottom, you come over, and there's one that's really sticky. There's a hard one right here, it's this one. Um, I kind of used a, a big long screwdriver and just kind of got in there to that point to kind of help pop it off, and then the panel comes off. Now we have to disconnect the existing uh, 12 volt plug. We just push this blue part and pull that out. And now our panel is totally free. American Adventure Labs made a really great product with this uh, chassis that you, that you drop this tray you drop in here, but I have two complaints. The first one is they didn't deburr the edges. <laughs> I have cut myself three times picking this thing up to take it in and out. And it's quite heavy with the compressor and the battery on there. So I'm now using gloves because that's the smart thing to do. The other complaint I have is, you can kind of see here that it doesn't quite fit, like it, it with especially with the weight in it, um, it kind of pulls in, you know, it like pulls in off of these holes. It's not quite wide enough. And, but part of the reason for that, I mean, it, it'll stretch over for sure. Part of the reason for that is look, like, I don't know if you can see this bounce, but um, it, it's got some clearance at the bottom of the tray underneath it. So it's kind of, it's sitting about 15 mils above the bottom. How do I know? Because <laughs> I cut some pool noodle and I'm gonna stick these underneath it just to kind of take up some of the slack because this is a Jeep. These things bounce around and I don't really like the idea of my battery and my compressor bouncing up and down with that much uh, clearance underneath it. <laughs> All right, so I'm installing the AirB compressor, but <clears throat> the AirB compressor is not going to be run by one of my aux switches, and I'm never going to isolate the two compressors from each other. And so when you get to the end of this switch, you've got a whole crap ton of stuff that happens here. That's the only switch you're using. Yeah, and so basically what's happening is we are coming out of this compressor, and we are getting, where's our wire? Okay, so we're, we're coming out of here with like just a couple of wires. Like, see that? Two. There's a black, a purple, and a red coming out of the compressor. It's hitting this. It's going like an absolute mile and a half. Turns down to that thing. That thing is plugging into this thing. Once it plugs into that thing, then it comes out into this giant forest of connectors down here, of which we are really only using a couple of things. So we're going to do a little bit of brain surgery here. <laughs> we're going to basically reduce the complexity. Down to four. Down to four. We're going to cut things down, down to this thing coming out of the Araby compressor, where it turns into just a black and purple. We're going to eliminate like this absolute mile of cord, which then comes to this complexity, because really, we're going to run to this, this device over here, which we're installing in the side of the Jeep. And all we got to do is turn the compressor on and off from here. One switch. One switch. It's a little bit longer than what we need. It's a little bit longer than what we need. So instead of tucking all that wire away, we're just kind of cutting things up so that we can get from the compressor up into where it's going. Short distance. Yeah, it's really not far. All right, here's the parts you need. Here's the part you don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so mounting the battery mounts on the side of the thing, I had to pull it back out of the Jeep because it's just yeah. easier this way. Once you try to put this red arc bracket onto the main bracket here, getting your hands into this tiny area sucks. And so what we did is we got a socket wrench, a small socket wrench with a little extender, and that allowed us to tighten that up. But man, that's kind of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. And there, like so, and then we're gonna go. 
All right, what we've got here is we ran off the positive terminal from the battery, ran that to the lower there, <clears throat> and then ran that other one over to the red arc uh, cable there. And then we've got our ground wire coming off the other one there to the top, and then the engine's gonna come right here. That's the hot wire. So here we are looking at the wiring uh, in the tray for install. Um, I put the hot right here. So I just bought this little thing and stuck it in there. So I'm gonna run the main, the main battery power will go in here. And uh, I'm grounding to here. I'm gonna test this later to see if I can ground right off of this tray. Uh, if not, then I'll run a ground wire off and uh, I'll run that to the chassis somewhere. Uh, everything's pretty tidy in here. I've been able to tuck it all into place. Um, still gotta run the compressor out. And then I simplified the wiring, which I mentioned earlier um, over here. So uh, that's gonna run up to the fuse box. Before you drop the tub back into the Jeep, it's a really good idea to install these air things because otherwise you are going to have to get your fingers in here to screw these things onto these three things. So put those on first. Pro tips. <laughs> Today, I am going to be running the wiring from the front of the cabin through the trim to the back. I got my uh, battery cable, my yellow for solar, and it's gray, meant to be blue <laughs> for ignition. And I wrapped myself a very, very long cord. Finding a fuse that linked the ignition on the Jeep was actually a real pain. Um, I've got the hybrid four-cylinder engine turbo and a lot of the things that people were saying online about which port to use were wrong uh, ultimately what I found was um, 50 here this is this is gonna do it uh, as you can see 50 shows up right around here on the diagram which is if we go look at our fuse box it's, it's right there so what I did was I bought one of these things, hooray, you can get them on Amazon. Um, and basically you pull the existing fuse out, pop it into the bottom slot, and then you got a wire for your ignition to go back right on. The solar wire in the front, uh, I may want to run a different connector in just because solar panels have weird connectors, or at least mine do, because I'm dumb. <laughs> if you get one of these little uh, Anderson connectors and you want to run your solar panel into it, here's a little tip for you. These things, they just go in there and they kind of clamp right over the middle. So basically this comes in and that little hook kind of just slides right over the middle. When you come in from the back and you're running it into the socket like that, really helps to have one of these tiny little screwdrivers to help push it all the way in. Right now I've got these two Anderson sockets here wired now, so I can run two regular solar panels if I need more than one. I don't think I will, but you know, it's always nice to have a little extra juice if you need it. And um, yeah, looking good. There's a good routing back here along the firewall. Um, following the other lines that are kind of run back there and it goes right through the firewall down there. If you go into the footwell under the driver's side, that's the little hole in the firewall that you can pass your wires through. And there it is from the other side, inside of the Jeep. So that's right, right down there. That's where you can make a little hole to get your wires through. I officially hate the trim inside of the Jeep jail. So what I did was I kind of just pulled this aside and then I took off those three bolts of this underlying piece here because there's a wiring channel running from that end to that end inside the driver's door. So from there to there. So I just took out these three bolts, I lifted that up and I ran the wiring through there and behind the seat belt and I'm gonna continue my way south. So coming past the uh, driver's side pillar, running the cable back through here, we got a similar situation. You see another one of these gray channel routers here. So I'm gonna pull those two bolts, run it through there, and then we will head to the back. There's already some cabling going back here um, and there's plenty of room to kind of just shove it in there and zip tie it along. And it goes all the way to the back of the Jeep. 
Once you're into the back cabin, um, I ran the wire underneath there. It's in good company, some other wires in there. And it comes down here right by uh, the rear taillight bolt there. And I've just zip tied it to some of these other ones that are already anchored there. And it's gonna run down that channel with all of its fellow other wires as soon as I get this all hooked up. And sometimes you just need something to help you along. Our next step is to get all of the air and wiring onto the fuse plate and air access that goes into the Jeep. This elbow is necessary, of course, to connect the air here, but there's no way to do that with that pre-installed. It's just it's there's not enough clearance here to turn it, as you can see. So I'm gonna have to take this off and then get that on there. All right, so we got that back on. Um, to put on these other air hoses, you push in this plastic here, and that allows you to release the hose. Like that, you push in that rubber, and the hose comes right out. And then on this, there's two bolts, and you basically slip this one off, and then that's how you get it through this hole. Once you have got those bolts back in, like that, to attach the hoses, you just literally just push them in and they will hold in there just with friction. And to release them, you can pull that again if you wanted to do that. My original idea was to have all of the lines go off to the side of this and run this way. But the problem with that is this piece of trim right here and what's underneath it. Because if I try to run it right there, it's going through um, quite a difficult part of the vehicle to move through, which is this anchor point. And I really don't want to run wires through there. So it looks like I have to run wires through over the over this part, which means it's going to pass through here. Passing through here, as you can see, it's low enough on that side. It is not low enough on this side. So I'm going to have to cut a channel right here out of that section. Basically, that notch has got to become big enough here to let all my hoses through and put them through there. So I'm going to cut this up right here so that my wires can pass under there and go up the sidewall. And now comes the part of the job that I wasn't really looking forward to. So this is the piece of trim that things mount onto. I just want to show you, this is the spot where you would access your tail light and it's got a little plate here. You see that's kind of like a flange thing. But problem is this piece goes right here and the bottom of this is where all the tubes come in. And so those have to go right through there. And as you can see, it's occluded by that little blockage. So I got to get in here and I gotta cut this out somehow to make this clear. Figuring out how to run the wires up the sidewall is a little bit tricky, but here's my thought. These pins right here are the ones that attach onto the back of the sidewall, right? So I don't want the wires on that. And there's a nice dip right here that takes me down to here. So if we look at the trim, we see the place where those pegs are gonna mount into this, which means that right next to it, this is where that channel is gonna be, pretty much right along here where the cigarette lighter, it's gonna travel right through here. There's a few obstacles, the rim of this, and this little box here, now, uh, and this little rib. Adding up all of the wires, uh, we've got 55 millimeters of width, and the thickest wire, which is the steel one, is 11 mils high, so basically, I need to make sure that as I pass behind here, I can put 11 mils of height and 55 mils wide, and I can break those up because those are different wires, but that'll help me measure how this should go. My 55 mils of width is gonna be kind of bundled into that hole. I'm not too worried about that, but this is set at 55, and so if you just kind of look at how wide that is and how it passes through here, if I laid them all out flat, it's gonna need a channel. I mean, I could split it on either side of this, but I think realistically, I'm gonna have to cut that rib there, cut at least some of these ribs here. And then when I get down to here, I'm gonna need to get, assuming this is flush against the sidewall, I'm gonna need to cut about that much out of here. And I'm gonna have to cut about that much deep to get the wires to clear out of the footing. Yes, 
This one, it goes to 11. So the wires will come out of there, they'll go straight down here, and then they'll pass through the little cutout I'm gonna make here, which will be right, if I've done my calculations correctly, the wires will pass right through here. Yeah, we're all gone a little wrong. Yeah, sometimes you just need something to help you along. All right, so that's where it goes in. And we have trimmed up that, removed that blade right there. Keeping in mind that I know nothing about wiring and electricity, again, <laughs> uh, the, this is the compressor switch. So I ran the red wire to uh, post six. I ran the orange and red wire to post three. I ran the two black wires to seven and eight. So I made some wires and uh, attached a few things here. I'm just gonna run them to the fuse box. This is the 12 volt plug. I'm gonna run positive and negative to the two sides. This is the LED display, um, the button to turn on the LED to check the battery, and uh, this little indicator here, which I patched in. So I got some red wire, and I got some grounding wires coming off of those. I'm just gonna run in all the fuse box. While I think that this tray is probably enough for grounding, um, I ran this grounding wire, and I saw that uh, right up where the wires are going, there's this bolt here. So I'm gonna steal this bolt. I'm gonna make this bolt uh, my ground and just run, so that, that's running back around there, just to, for an extra ground to the body. It's getting very close. I've got everything wired up here, and we're running the wires down in the channel. Just trying to figure out where they go. So this piece of duct tape here represents where I cut the vent on the side panel, and the other piece of duct tape re represents where I cut the piece here, the channel through there. So uh, I think I've got it figured out. I'm running all of the major wires on this side and then the three air, so the braided and these two are gonna run on this side, which will mean it'll cross here, which means I'm probably gonna have to cut out the carpet that lays over that. And then hopefully this will all fit up here. Um, I feel like I'm close, but uh, man, it just has taken a lot of time. Very proud of myself to have found uh, the bolt here to do an extra ground, but that is a big wire and that means that the cut i made here is probably just not quite big enough i'm gonna have to dremel it out a little bit just soften the edges of the screw yeah just in case since we're running right along and over it well yeah i didn't want to do that but there's just no other way to route it through this because the bolt is right next to it it began to feel like it wasn't going to happen but uh the panel is on, everything is clicked into place, everything's coming out the top. Sometimes you just need more than two hands. <laughs> uh, now we gotta now we gotta figure this piece out. We've, we're already routed out, and I disconnected these air hoses because uh, these things are such a pain. They're really just stiff. For maneuverability. Yeah, for maneuverability. They're just they're just really annoying. But they're pushed to connect, so we just kind of slip them in there when we're ready. So now we're gonna see how good the routing happened here when we bolt that in. And no one could blame you. We've all gone a little wrong. Oh, sometimes you just need something to help you along. Balls right there. Pinch down. You pull it. And clip. There's everything going in there. I still got I'm gonna have to router out the cover here. But uh, yeah, look at that. And uh, everything's mostly back. We're just gonna wire in this panel now, uh, which we kind of did earlier, but then pulled apart so that uh, we could make it easier to run these wires. Running that was a pain. It takes two people, definitely, definitely. Our button here for checking the battery here. Um, yeah. On the back had this tiny ass wire, which was pretty much breaking off. So we got a better wire. Stick yep. in there and fix it. Yes. In my efforts to uh, get wires routed, I ended up yanking off the LED wires as well. So I got another LED. Luckily, uh, one of the guys I read was like, hey, go buy 50,000 of these in a bag for like 50 cents. So I did that. So I uh, stuck the other LED in here, 
and uh, we're just zip tying these together because Jeffrey, who knows a lot of stuff about trucks and wiring <laughs> and has pulled a few wires himself over the years. Three or four. Yeah. He's like, dude, we're just going to stick these together. So if you yank on this, um, these are all sort of anchored together. You don't want to pull wires loose from what they're attached to. Amen. <laughs> it is now time to put this panel up. But before I did so, I really wanted to just give one quick look. You see the fuse box is wired up now. We got the 12 volt. I actually pulled off the ARB because I don't have an ARB fridge. Um, I may stick something else there at some point. This is all set up. We pulled off some wires on there because I'm not running the ARB from anywhere but here. So there's that switch there. And we replaced our LED. We ran our little battery. That's the battery uh, display module here and the button that allows you to turn it on. And that is all coming up through here. And the big blue and red wires are the positive and negatives going on the ends. And I've got those things, the grounds on that side and the hot over there on the other. The battery tender's coming right off the same one that came from the battery because we wanna make sure that the voltages are as accurate as possible. And this here is what will be the fridge because fridge is gonna be running off of this. So uh, that'll be there and yeah, just got to shove these air tubes in here. We cut those. This is going to roll up here. Jeffrey is going to help me do this so you can see this. So if I ever do want to pull this off, it's not going to be crazy. Okay, ready? All right, ready. Look at the beauty of this. Look at the elegance. <laughs> the ergonomics. Comes around. And there we go. Just got to bolt that in. That'll and, bolt down. And get there. them. Yeah, get those, those push... Yep. Air tubes in. Just gotta trim those. Let's do it. 0.7 volts in that battery. We just ran, we just ran from the mains. We plugged everything in. Let's see, oh my gosh. Engine's running. LED is. That LED means the uh, charger's working. 14.3 volts there. 14.5 now. Oh, okay. That's what All I was, right. yeah. Should That's see, good. Should we flip the, flip the uh, compressor? Try it. It's alive! Once it reaches a certain pressure, it has automatic shutoff. That is so cool. I've never owned one of those. I'm really so, excited to have it on board, then, man. And then see see your light? Yeah. On, off. So you can tell, even though it's not running, in case you look at that, you know the it should be running because the light's on. That's really cool. I didn't realize there was a there was a backlit logo on there. That's cool. Now you can bolt that up. Now we're gonna <laughs> bolt it up. So we just popped our first fuse just as I was going to put it back because guess what we did? As I went to put that back, this metal touched those things there. So we're going to heat shrink this up to insulate it and we're going to put some heat shrink on those two points there to prevent it from sparking off the 12 volts. And that's why you have fuses. That's why I got fuses. Yeah, buddy. Yep. To save future fuses, there's the hot for the 12 volt. It's covered. And we even gave a turtleneck to our nice little air hose. <laughs> we laid it down here. You can measure how far over about. Yeah. And then about three inches. We put some tape on the other on both sides. Just gonna start dremeling this out and see what happens. Alright, that's what we gotta cut. <laughs> tape covering that up it looks really good honestly from a distance you wouldn't even notice that, that was there it's already been a week since i installed that included four days off grid at a musical festival camping trip i was not off-roading but i did get to use the air compressor to fill up some bike tires i was running my fridge and other electronics off of the secondary battery here and it worked like a champ just putting the solar out the hood i'm very happy with the build when you close it up it looks like nothing is there I am cognizant that Jack Bruski on Jail Forums talked about um, American Adventure Labs sticking up and needing to route out other parts of the cover to accommodate the size. I have been putting a lot of weight on this. Um, I had a fridge, I had it fully packed with kids and gear. So if this thing was gonna rub, I would see marks. He talked about the red arc plate here, rubbing here. There is no marks 
I do not think that is rubbing. The only thing I will say is this, I think sticks up just a little bit because I do see a mark there. But honestly, the depression is really slight. Um, I, I could wrap that up, but I think that's about as deep as it's gonna go. I don't see it bending. I don't see it flexing. It is sitting pretty flush. So I think that is a win. If you're going to do this install, the American Adventure Labs kit comes with the larger wires that you'll need to run to your front battery and ground. If you buy all of their connectors, you're in good shape, but you're still gonna need tools, of course, to do the install. So you'll need some wrenches. You're gonna need some wire tools, a cutter, a stripper, a crimper. Sometimes one tool does all three things, that's good. A heat gun, I didn't have one for the heat shrink on the wire. And then of course a drill and some bits. Uh, for installing the mounts for the red arc plate, but also it just helps in removing screws and stuff while you're doing this. And finally, a Dremel. You'll need the cutting bits that come with the Dremel. Maybe they came with a basic kit. If not, it's easy to find Dremel parts. Not necessary, but very handy is having a trim tool to remove all the trim and get underneath things. Of course, you can always just use a flathead screwdriver too. That's fine. Wiring wise, you'll need to get some extra wire um, I got a blue wire. You saw it was gray in the video that I ran up to the ignition. That was useful to have something long enough to do that. Because I'm running solar into my Jeep, I got some uh, yellow wire for that. For all the accessories in the side plate, just some red and black wire for those. I ended up replacing some of those wires, as you saw, and it's just good to have extras for things you want to add to the fuse block. Obviously, you'll need wire ends for everything by one of those kits. Uh, the heat shrink so that you can use that heat gun and then cloth tape. I'll put a link to the cloth tape that I used. I got that from um, Jack Brewsty on jail forums. He, he pointed some tape that pretty much matches the inside of the Jeep. And then finally a whole mess of zip ties. The additional materials you're going to need is the fuse expander for the ignition wire. Make sure it's a micro two fuse so that the posts are the right size. You're going to need, likely with all of those wires that you have in the cubby, an extra post to put all the positive wires on. You're going to need a pool noodle. That's if you had the issue that I had where the tray was a little high and it was kind of bouncing. It doesn't fit exactly. Maybe that was just my problem. I don't know. Um, but I found that helpful. In fact, foam is fine pull noodle foam just anything non-flammable you could stick in there take up that space would be great a solar input socket i bought because i want to put solar on my jeep maybe you do maybe you don't that'd be useful and then i bought an extra bag of leds they're really cheap it was really useful because i ended up accidentally breaking it the one that comes with the kit is really fragile and small so i was glad i had those on hand i'll put links to all of these additional materials in the description This is definitely the best place to put the dual air B compressor on a JL. It's like, it's not even there. And I get all the benefits of having it and none of the hassle. I'm really surprised that you can put it under the floorboards there. It still gets all the ventilation with the bracket and the external air filters at the top. I am a pretty happy Jeep owner. My Jeep looks pretty much the same as when I bought it. Fold that down, you can't even tell what I've done, but I have the extra capabilities. There's no lugging around an extra battery. There's no worrying about running out of power. There's no impact on my storage space, which in a vehicle this small is a big deal to me. Me and two kids, I sleep upstairs. They used to sleep downstairs. They're big stinky teenagers now. They don't like doing that too much anymore, but I still have a lot of gear because it's the four of us in this one small Jeep. So we go off grid, everything feels great. Thanks so much for sticking around. Hope the video was helpful to you. Subscribe to my channel if you can. If you liked the music you were listening to, that's me. I play some music. I would love it if you went over to my channel on YouTube, youtube.com slash lightholder. That's me playing music. Subscribe there. Let me know. Let's go out on the trails. I'll play you a tune. All right. Sean, Gene, Green Irish Jeep. Talk to you guys soon. <laughs>